Well, the Education Minister, Hekia Parata, has come in for an absolute grilling following her decision to close or merge Christchurch schools. That is fair to say. But she is in the studio to take your calls this morning and to discuss the fallout from the announcement. Minister, good to have you in the studio this morning. Thank you for your time. Good morning. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. First things first, and this is what we discussed on Talkback this morning. A Sarah survey, according to your colleague Jerry Brownlee, says three quarters of residents say life is good or extremely good. Now, he released this media statement yesterday. Isn't that bad timing, given your announcement on Monday? Things are not that great for many people in Christchurch. I think what we have to remember here in terms of my particular role is that what we want to um, build or renew here is one of the best education systems in the country and potentially, you know, to 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 the world. So um, we're very keen that Christchurch has a schooling system that is the envy of others, and that's what this is all about because we want Christchurch kids to have the best education possible. But was his media statement bad timing? Well, it's, I'm talking about it in the context of looking forward of the future, of the opportunity, of the possibilities um, that uh, lie in front of the Greater Christchurch community. We have 215 schools across Greater Christchurch. The proposals for uh, originally for 38, but as you know, Hammersley and Le Bon's Bay schools both sought closure mm. themselves. So that um, means we're dealing with 36 schools. Five, which includes all of those in the Aranui cluster, we're waiting for their submissions. They're not expected until the 7th of March. So on uh, earlier this week, I was dealing with 31 schools. We made proposals back in September. There was a full 10-week consultation. Every one of the 31 schools put in submissions, for which I thank them. And uh, we worked through the period until uh, early this week, analysing those submissions, including ones we got from the Canterbury District Health Board. On my invitation, the NZEI and the PPTA also put in submissions. And we looked at all the material that we have. And I announced my interim decisions on Monday, which were that we would not proceed with 12, but we would proceed with um, the balance of 19. Now, of those 19 schools, we're proposing that seven close and that 12 merge into six. Um, and that, that affects, you know, as I say, 19 schools out of 215. The other announcement I made on Monday was that we will be building 15 new schools. Two will get underway in April, one in Pegasus and one in West Hallswell. So we are investing into new schools, repairing schools, repairing Hearing swimming pools, while at the same time uh, working with these interim decisions for these 19 schools. Okay, this is a yes or no response, for, just quickly for this one. Is this a cost-cutting directive from Treasury to fix our deficit, yes or no? No. Who has the final say on what's, what schools will close? Uh, I do as the Minister of Education. So the buck stops with you? It does. Okay. Well, let's get to other things now. Have you recognised, though, Minister, that the important role school plays in communities following New Zealand's biggest disaster. Absolutely. Have you recognised that? Absolutely. I absolutely do recognise that. How have you recognised that? Well, for a start, um, as a parent, I know how important schools are to our families and to our communities. Uh, and, and as an observer of what was happening in Christchurch before I became the Minister of Education, it was very clear that schools became the immediate hubs. Um, it was also very clear how important they were because the Ministry of Education leapt into action that very day to work with schools to ensure that the kids were safe, that their parents knew where they were, that teachers and principals were supported, and that support has continued from that day to this, and we will continue to support schools and work with each and every one of them. It has been suggested, Minister, that the government has used the earthquakes to ram through its education education agenda. So the only agenda I have is to raise achievement for every child in this country. Was the earthquake seen as an opportunity to redesign schooling as we know it in New Zealand? 
No. One of the reasons that New Zealand has a world-class education system is because it has been adaptive. It's because it has a wide diversity of choice in the schooling options available to parents. It's because we constantly take um, research and evidence and understand what best practice is. And so there will be um, um, developments in Christchurch that the rest of the country will want to learn from. And there are models around the country that can be used here in Christchurch. Hey, Kipper, I'll just stop you there. What I mean when I say agenda, and I'll give you an example of what I'm, I'm getting at. You try to on with classroom sizes. You were forced to back down. That's a fact. Uh, you're now merging schools. And let me give you an example of what I'm on about. If Burwood School merges with Windsor School, for argument's sake, that's going to create a bigger pupil population. And therefore bigger classroom sizes. You've sneaked the classroom size issue through the back door. No, it doesn't work that way. How classroom sizes are funded, every school is funded on the number of kids on the roll of that school and then there is a formula at what level the, um, each uh, age group is funded and then the principal decides what class size they will have across their school. But with all due respect, principals haven't been able to decide anything so far in Christchurch. Uh, well, so it again, could change, couldn't it? No, no. The formula for funding schools in New Zealand is based on the kids on the role of a school. Could that change? No. Okay. Uh, we'll take a break shortly. We're with uh, Minister Hekia Parata. If you have a concern or a question, you can speak to her directly by giving us a call this morning on 340 1098 0800 80 We are on Facebook, Canterbury Mornings with Chris Lynch. You can like us there. Um, there doesn't seem to be consistency. Uh, this is what I'm hearing from your, your decisions, Minister. Shirley Boys High School, for example, needs to find new land because of a $12.5 million it would, it would have needed to spend on getting the land fixed. But how come Shirley Intermediate right next door is fine? No land issues. Does um, that seem odd? Well, the earthquake created significantly more damage at Shirley Boys than it did at Shirley Intermediate. The geotech report from Shirley Boys has given us that evidence. But no decisions have been made about Shirley Boys or about secondary schools at this time because they are working at a cl as a cluster to put proposals together. Shirley Intermediate it is proposed that they not close because in their particular proposal, um, we had thought, well, we would... Um I'm trying to think of a regular word instead of recapitation. Um, so instead of primary schools being years one to six, they could become years one to eight. But because of the need for certainty in that particular cluster, because a number of schools have closed, and with the geotech report um, just across the way at Shirley Boys, it made sense that Shirley Intermediate remain open.